coverage. Here's LeBron James on Live Sports Center, in case you can't tell. Thank you. LeBron, you've hit your fair share of buzzer beaters. Uh, the ESPN stats and info put out that was Rondo's first, I think, after 12 attempts. So what was it like seeing that going and then seeing out the, the post game, considering all this and being in Boston? You know, man, I think for Rondo, I think it's, uh, he couldn't even dream about that moment to be back here in the garden and uh, where he won a championship, where obviously, you know, he has so many memories of being here. Um, and for him to get his hands on the ball at that moment and uh, be able to knock that down, it was a, it was a storybook ending. Luke said he started to see in the third quarter you look like you're starting to be more like yourself physically. Uh, where did you feel like today, and as the, especially as the game went on, he got stronger? Yeah, as the game went on, I'm, uh, you know, I'm starting to get more and more um, back to myself. You know, every possession, every quarter, uh, every time I take a hit, you know, and I'm able to, uh, you know, nudge it off and keep going. Um, so I'm, I'm working my way back, and I'm, and I'm getting better and better. Um, you know, every single minute. So. In that third quarter, I was able to get back to my point forward position, um, you know, controlling the game, finding my shooters. They was knocking them down. I was able to get into the paint as well a couple of times, and um, you know, my teammates uh, you know, you know, paid off. Given what happened uh, Tuesday in Indiana, I mean, do you guys feel like you needed this win a little more, this kind of response in this building against this team? Yeah, we needed a response. You know, um, you know, it's just a lot that was going on with our ball club in Indiana. You know, just you know, from energy that you know we didn't need. Uh, you know, you know, trades and everything, you know, I think it just played a little bit into our heads and um, as, as a collective group and uh, for us to bounce back like this after the trade deadline, you know, we know this is what we have, this is our group and uh, it, was a, it was a big step for our team. What is your level of confidence in this group here going forward? Uh, when we're healthy, uh, my level is, is high. Uh, we're a team that's built on depth and when we're healthy, we're very good as we saw, as we uh, you know, showed the league when, uh, when we were healthy. So uh, we're getting back to that. We're still missing our star point guard and, 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 uh, and Zoe. So, you know, but we're going to hold the four down until he gets back. What did you think of the moves you guys made over the last few days? Um, I think it improves our team. Um, you know, it definitely um, creates more space for, uh, you know, B.I., uh, myself, and for Rondo. Uh, you know, and, and adding a shooter like Mike Muscala, who spreads the floor extremely well, who's going to be guarded by a lot of bigs, and so we keep the bigs out of the paint. And then adding uh, Reggie, who was in the top, you know, five and, and you know, makes and, uh, you know, three-point three percentage. Um, you know, I think that's going to help us out a lot as well. So. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to these guys, uh, you know, getting to the team and uh, you know, seeing what we, what, how we can help them and they can help us. You're sort of using some wacky seasons in the past where it was up and down, and then you <clears throat> stride kind of at the right time, and able to, to ride it um, into a postseason berth. Does that inform this season for you at all? The past experiences and you know what the potential still could be for this. this yeah, group? I think if I'm if I'm healthy and we're and we're a collective group, and um, you know, I think we can uh, we can make a push. And that's all it's about, and um, you know. And, and if I continue to, to get in the form, and we continue to to get in the form as well as a, as a collective group, uh, then we will hit a stride. What about the younger guys? I mean, do you kind of see a lock-in mentality from them starting to form tonight? Well, yeah. I mean, um, you know, I think after the deadline, you know, they was able to kind of just to relax. I know. I think it just played a lot with their minds a little bit, and um, you know. And then after the, the three o'clock deadline, um, they knew, and we all knew that this is who we have, and this is who we love to be around. So. Um, they were able to lock in, and uh, you know, even with Bi not shooting the ball extremely well tonight, his defense uh, throughout the night on Kyrie and throughout a lot of those guys was exceptional. And then Cruz's second half performance was uh, uh, was tremendous. So, uh, you know, they're going to be big for our team down the stretch. Did you say anything or, to, or do anything? LeBron's 77th triple double. That's nothing new, or neither are close finishes between the Lakers and the Celtics. That's Irvin Johnson in 1887. Also, 1987. They didn't play in 1887. He's not that old. Uh, January 20, 1995. Same kind of thing happened. The old garden. Nick Van Exel launches the improbable three, the win, and the Lakers got that one. So that's three for the Lakers. Trade deadline has passed. One move can alter the landscape of the entire league. And take last year, for example, when six of LeBron's teammates were traded on the day of the deadline. That team, of course, went on to the finals. And only once before were that many players traded from a single team on deadline day. Oh, by the way, also LeBron 2008 Cavaliers. Now, fast forward to this year, and it looked like the Lakers might be headed down the same road. But just two teammates were traded on deadline day. None among the team's young core. But what now for those who stayed on the team that for weeks appeared not to want them? Here's Dave McMenamin. Just days before the NBA trade deadline, the indelible image from the seemingly left-for-dead Los Angeles Lakers 
was LeBron James completely isolated from his teammates on the bench during a blowout loss in Indiana. Thursday, with the trade deadline finished and the Lakers roster looking much the same, there was a far more effervescent scene. Believe it or not, I always dream like this, you know what I mean? But I couldn't picture it being this week. Team struggling right now, and it's, I think it's going to be definitely a confidence boost, of course. Rondo, one of a litany of Lakers who heard his name attached to Anthony Davis reports in recent weeks, hit the first buzzer-beating game winner of his 13-year career. And the Lakers looked like a team that found its fight again. We need a response from energy that you know, we didn't need, uh, you know, from, you know, trades and everything. You know, I think it just played a little bit into our heads and um, as, a, as a collective group. And uh, for us to bounce back like this after the trade deadline, you know, we know this is who we have. This is our group and uh, you know, it, was a, it was a big step for us. Yeah, I won't say need, but it, it helps. If winning helps a lot. With Davis still in New Orleans and L.A. pulling off a couple minor moves to acquire some shooting and Reggie Bullock and Mike Muscala, both expected to join the team this weekend, the Lakers, wouldn't you know it, set a franchise record for threes. It felt like a sound of relief, especially all year. We haven't been shooting the ball as well as we can um, as a team and individually. So um, to come out like that, Breathe in, breathe out, Lakers fans. The season is still alive. It might not feature LeBron and AD playing alongside one another as Magic Johnson and company hoped for, but the players still donning the purple and gold don't plan to go quietly into the night. I think if I'm if I'm healthy and we're and we're a collective group and uh, you know I think we can uh, we can make a push and that's all it's about and uh, you know and, and if I continue to, to get in the form and we continue to to get in the form as well as a, as a collective group uh, then we will have to try. Dave McMenamin, thank you. Lakers back at it this Sunday for a trip to Philly. A game BPI, Basketball Power Index, says they have just a 31% chance of winning. Then they'll face the Hawks in their last game before the All-Star break. Soon after, James Harden and Anthony Davis away. Tip off your weekend, NBA Friday doubleheader. Nikola Jokic and the Nuggets take on Embiid, Tobias in the new look six or seven p.m. Eastern, and Carl Anthony Towns leads the Timberwolves against the Pelicans. All these teams have been in the news lately, both games on ESPN. Take it with you on the ESPN. Let's head to the set of Get Up where we find our good friend Jalen Rose. Good morning, Jalen. Uh, the Sixers host the Nuggets tonight. Tobias Harris making his Philly debut. How do you see Harris fitting in with the Sixers squad? I see him fitting in amazing, Jay. I feel like the Sixers now have the second most accomplished starting lineup in the entire NBA. Joel Embiid has been playing amazing all year at an all-NBA level. Ben Simmons is a triple-double threat. He's going to be an all-star. Jimmy Butler showed his worth, in particular when he first arrived, making game-winning shots. Now the world gets a chance to witness how good of a player and of efficient player Tobias Harris really is. I think he's going to surprise a lot of people with his productivity and his ability to get shots not only off the catch, but to shoot effectively from three off the dribble. And Philadelphia also now has a lot of tall players that will be interchangeable on both ends of the floor. It's a terrific pickup. Elton Brand has done an amazing job as a general manager. And don't overlook picking up Jonathan Simmons as well, who has a pedigree of playing with the Spurs. I really like what the Sixers have done. They're my favorite now in the East. Jalen Rose, appreciate you. Go get ready for the show. Thanks for the love. And coming up next on Get Up, they're going to have the latest NBA trade deadline fallout. Plus, Jalen breaking down which Lakers and Celtics players could be part of a deal for AD. And what the Cowboys need to do this offseason to cause some conflict. Get Up, 8 a.m. Eastern, ESPN and the ESPN app. Center with you on a Friday morning. Welcome. He's Matt Berry. I'm Jay Harris. Tim Legler with us talking hoops this morning. Very senior. Right too. early. <laughs> Oh, we got rid of him. Uh, what is sports great <laughs> rivalries renewed last night? Celtics, Lakers. Over the last 200 times these two teams have played, they are tied at 100 wins apiece. LeBron coming off the 42 point loss. Lakers fans want Kyrie to reunite with LeBron. Look at that swinger. Oh, Bel Belichick in attendance. He's a champion. You can do that.
quite a few times. Uh, Lakers are trailing by as many as 18 in this one. Late second legs, James gets this thing going. And you know he's feeling it if he's just going to rise up from 30 off the catch like that. But at that point, down 18, I think he's trying to do anything to give them a spark, get them back in the game. And they kind of did. He finds Lance Stevenson, Contavious Caldwell Pope, kind of sleepwalking early, but then they would get back in this one. Yeah, they, I think they were still feeling the effects from that loss the other night early in the game. Boston had a great rhythm, but then the Lakers, once they started making some shots, they got confident. You see the numbers there. James would be responsible for the Lakers' last 22 points of the first half. Second half, a third quarter, they outscored the Celtics 42-27. to 27. So now to the fourth, Kyrie needed to get it going to keep Boston in this one. Yeah, he had really struggled through three quarters, but it doesn't matter. You know where they're going to go late in the game. Get the ball to Kyrie, top of the key, gets a switch, and then that handle gets him to the rim, but LeBron has an answer. Cut the deficit to one. Did LeBron ensuing Celtics possession? Kyrie responds for three of his own. Yeah, that little sidestep three that's become so popular now in the NBA. A really unguardable Kyrie. Big time step back. And this is just unfortunate for the Celtics. LeBron LeBron tries to throw it off Al Horford's foot, and if it had, they'd probably lose the game. Instead, they end up with a loose ball, a scramble play, and LeBron James gets a three in the corner to keep them in it and tie it up. All tied at 124 Lakers, 22 three-pointers made. That is most in a game in franchise history. Under 20 to play. Boston down one. Kyrie drives. Boston takes the lead back. No timeouts. Ten seconds to play. Legs, we're going to run this thing. LeBron guarded. They were smart there. Nice job denying him up the floor. They want someone else to beat. Beat him. Ingram tries to reverse and again a tough break for the Celtics. Three different guys get their hands on this ball. If they can secure a rebound, game over. Instead, loose ball ends up in the hands of Rondo. His feet were squared up and he knocked it down. How about Rondo, the hero for the Lakers? Have another look. Ball finds it. It's the Lakers' largest comeback win this season. 129, 128. What a finish. Rajon Rondo, your hero. Where does your mind go if you let that ball fly? Just, just get it up. Get the arc up. Um, you know, believe it or not, I always dream like this. You know what I mean? But I couldn't picture it being this sweet coming back on, you know, 13 years in, you know, where it all started. Uh, team struggling right now, and it's, I think it's be definitely a confidence boost, of course. I, mean, I think for Rondo, I think it's, uh, he couldn't even dream about that moment to be back here in the Garden and uh, where he won a championship, where obviously, you know, he has so many memories of being here. Um, and for him to get his hands on the ball at that moment and uh, be able to knock that down, it was a, it was a storybook ending. The ball finding him at the end of the game, you know, some of that helped bring this city a championship. Uh, and for him to, you know, knock that down was... Uh, for me and Laker fans, it was a beautiful ending to the game. So this storied series comes down to buzzer beaters. 87, Magic made this running jumper for 115-114. Went at the old Boston Garden. Seven Hall of Famers on the floor when that shot was made. Again, remarkable that over the last 200 times these teams have played, it is now 101-100 Lakers. 95, old Boston Garden. Nick Van Exel threw in the miracle of the buzzer to stun the Celtic faithful and then last night not quite of magic fame but Rondo still the same result first career go ahead field goal in the final 10 seconds of the fourth quarter or overtime he was previously 0 and 11 in such shots and what about this let's flash back the LeBron's team had a similar fate last year February 7th 2018 quick and loans Jeff Green laser to LeBron I mean, the exact date. You see Isaiah Thomas there, not quite involved in LeBron's celebration. Remember, he was traded on the day of the deadline on the very next day. Don't celebrate, go out of town. <laughs> Move on to Grizzlies and Thunder. Russell Westbrook had himself a night, which that's what just what he does. Second quarter, though, he has some trouble with the rim. Tim, um, Russ with the steal. Thank you much. Wide open dunk. Uh, Ooh. A little too much force and anger. We love how he attacks the glass, but a little too much on that one. It got too high, I think, Jay. That thing slams off the back iron. How many times have you done that? Oh, countless. <laughs> Count did it yesterday. It's, it's just, <laughs> it's just gets so frustrating sometimes. Noon game at the Y. <laughs> so frustrating. Third quarter, uh, Russ, he's like, I'm getting revenge on the rim this time. You see, he was really yeah, careful. Yeah, he took a little sauce off of that one. You can see. He wanted to make sure it was going to happen twice. And he's got a little smile and a finger wave to the crowd. Like, you're not going to get me twice, Rim. <laughs> I, like, I like to watch him play. He has a lot of fun. Uh, moving to the third quarter, Thunder up 70-59. Jeremy Grant, jump shot, no. Russ, rebound, lays it in. 
Thunder up 13. Fourth quarter, the lead is huge for OKC. Westbrook using the screen. Alley oop to Terrence Ferguson. Thunder going to win 117.95. Russ triple double. What else? 15, 13, and 15. His eighth straight. So. Russell Westbrook with his eighth straight triple-double. He's the second player in NBA history to have eight straight triple-doubles. The NBA record is nine straight, done by Wilt Chamberlain 51 years ago. Russ's next game tomorrow on ABC against James Harden and the Rockets. Like Westbrook, Harden is also chasing an all-time Wilt Chamberlain streak. Westbrook also among those involved in the All-Star draft last night. And here are the rosters. LeBron drafted Russ, but traded him for Ben Simmons afterward. Simmons, the only player on Team LeBron, making his first All-Star appearance, where Giannis had four players making their All-Star debut. Yeah, and add it all up, Team LeBron has an 81-57 advantage in terms of career All-Star selections. Westgate says they'll release odds closer to game time to make sure everyone is still scheduled. Meanwhile, this is my favorite moment of the night. Uh, Anthony Davis was drafted by Team LeBron. Taken fifth. Here's more on that entertaining exchange. With my first pick in the second round, I'm going with Anthony Davis. You sure you want him to be your teammate? Uh, I, you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm very sure of that. <laughs> right. is, is, is it that tempering? No, no. <laughs> tempering rules does not imply on All Star Weekend. <laughs> yeah. I think the best way to do this for Giannis to trade everybody on his bench for Anthony Davis. <laughs> That's why the All-Star draft needs to be televised. It, yes, absolutely. You have moments like that. So, Legler, the story coming out of Anthony Davis, obviously not dealt at the deadline. Uh, the team did announce yesterday that they will play him for the rest of the season. What do you make of Davis not going anywhere and the team deciding to play him. Well, look, they made a decision that they think is in their best interest to get more options this summer. So if you make that decision, you're going to have to live with the repercussions. You can't just shelve a healthy player if he wants to play. And that's the tough position they put themselves in. It really doesn't benefit the Pelicans in any way, shape, or form to have Anthony Davis on the court. It doesn't help them. They're not going to make the playoffs. It's unrealistic to think that they can. So you're going to have to live with this situation because when I say it can't help them, all you're really risking is potentially an injury. And, and could that impact his trade value in the summer? So he's not really doing much for them, but they made the decision, a conscious decision, to not move him. Didn't really even entertain the Lakers' offer. Wouldn't even return their phone calls, right. sending the indication clearly they want to get to the summer obviously get Boston into the mix after July 1st but Kyrie Irving can become a free agent and what other teams can put together something the Clippers the Knicks what do they have put your best foot forward more options Del Demps thinks that's better for us we get the most value for Anthony Davis only Michael Jordan and LeBron James have a higher career PER than Davis all time so yeah let him play he's that's a good. difference maker he's pretty good he's a difference maker yeah